Hello everyone, it's Janet and Anne Marie, your Boomer Broads, uh, here on a beautiful spring day in Boston, Massachusetts. Yes. As I look out the window, the beautiful flower. Oh, magnificent. spring has sprung, and Best we deserve it. We do. Oh, well, you got it. Did you did you doubt it? Yes. <laughs> Snowstorm on April first. Hell yeah. I've been doubting so it quite wanna, a bit. I want to ask you a thing. It's a, it, it, we live ask in Massachusetts. Me. Yes. And according to a study, it says we're the 44th most unhappy state. We no. are the four. Yes, on the, the list of 44th. 44th. And what were the criteria? However, oh. what I think is very interesting is we are not so unhappy that we commit suicide. Oh, that's so, good. so I thought that was very funny. It says uh, Massachusetts. Could be an ranks, interesting show, though. We could, as one of the more miserable states in the union, number forty-four. Why? It's the weather. It's the it's weather. Not. But there's a silver lining. We are more willing than most Americans to keep on uh, keep trying, keep at it. Well, so we're we resilient. Don't give up. That's the New Englander. Yes, we That's are. the new, the resilient New Englander. But is it the weather that makes us the most miserable? I think Do they just say why? They get into so it, but you don't want me to read the whole. No, part. I don't. I really wouldn't have read. Didn't read it. Okay, so okay. before we get into our, our our subject of the week, which yes. is actually going to be a lot of fun. Yes. I just have one thing to say. Oh, I know. Can't wait. 6 a.m. Tea it, and crumpets. I am ready. Call me a baby. I get a hat. Do, is a baseball cap is <laughs> acceptable? <laughs> That's all Something I Something tells me Kate would like that. I think she would. I think, I think she, she would. would. It's it's I am totally Dying into it. it. I hope I can get up. TiVo. Just TiVo. Yeah, TiVo, TiVo, TiVo. TiVo, TiVo, TiVo. But it's going to be. I'm oh, it. it's part of history. How often I'm does something so, like this happen? So when was that? When was Diana? What year? Do you remember? I remember I, I was working in television news at the time, so it had to be the late 80s. Oh, I'm really sorry. I oh, feel God, early 90s. Are you going to ask me that? Damn. Oh, well. Have, so I have another question, which will segue into our subject of the week. What kind of a boss do you think I am? Be kind. I think you are, you are actually an excellent boss because there's no BS with you. People know how you feel. You may not be happy. You may not feel happy. And you may not feel that someone is doing a good job, but there's no BS. And I think that, you know, there's nothing worse than a boss that you're not quite sure how they feel about you or your work. We know how you feel, Amber. Am I a and queen I, bee? No, no. Not in the so least. So we were, we, the, what prompted this week's show is a study that came out about queen, the queen bee syndrome uh, that prompted us to say, and the queen bee syndrome is the person, the woman, who is actually really nasty to other women, mm -hmm. hardest on other women. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, most of the people in our, most of the staff in our agency are women. Well, most of the people in the marketing industry itself in general, are, it's a are female women. industry. But, but yeah, no, it is, it is interesting, and you see it in a lot of pop culture, uh, female bosses who are particularly yeah. tough on, on women, and do they say, how it emanated? Well, how you become a queen bee? It's basically no. I, I don't. I don't know. And again, I'm not going to read the whole story. But it says that um, women who make it to the top of an organization are more likely to help out men than other women in the organization, yeah. as if they're too threatened by the other women in the organization, which I think is a, that they call that the queen bee syndrome. Um, and instead of other encouraging women to be ambitious. They want to keep them in their place. They want to keep them in their place so that they don't surpass them. Yes, that's. Which a, I think is. Very, I think it's just called insecurity, isn't it's, it? I, it's horrible. I mean, it's a horrible syndrome, yeah. and it's an insecurity uh, on the part of, of that type of a boss. Yeah. And I think that you would have thought that we'd gotten over that by now. You would absolutely have thought that. Although, Although you would have thought it would have been the exact opposite. You asked, They would have been encouraging young women to rise and. And, and supporting women, yes. of course. You asked for um, some of our fans to log on to our Facebook page oh, and give us some of their uh, horror stories. Mm -hmm. I have one, and you'll, you'll mm -hmm. tell me. Well, mine isn't a horror story. Mine's a humorous story. Okay. Well, mine is a horror story. Know, but yes. my cousin Kate logged on, mm -hmm. and indeed, and I went through this with her, um, her horrible, horrible boss. And you won't say I'm going to read it. You no, I'm not going to say where, where but her and bad boss lady, name. indecisive, irritable, scattered, trauma-inducing screamer, at least four women in her department left. One even sued afterwards for a hostile work environment. That wow. same boss, because my cousin left her job because of the environment, um, moved on to an even better job, and then she segued into a better life. And so she said, oh, it turned out fine for her. But she just found out that that boss, that woman, got fired a couple of weeks ago. Justice. Unbelievable. Justice. Not sweet. I That's say, sweet. what took them? Yeah. What took them so long, really? Well, she had obviously hoodwinked. 
her boss. And you had a, did you have somebody else who wrote in with a horror story? Uh, yes. Is it on here as well? Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. We're on it today, oh, aren't Faith. we? Faith wrote us. Yeah, that was cute. She says, um, my boss at my previous job was so old that I constantly worried that I could do him in just by entering his office too quickly. Have you had a boss like that? <laughs> they're like teetering. You're not even sure if they're with you half the day. So I was always afraid that I would have to go on the lamb if that happened. I still have nightmares. That's just a bad boss was too old. Seriously. Obviously, that was cute. That was cute. Yeah. Anyway. But you so, had a boss, and, and yes, I, you I know, obviously we don't have time to retell all well, of our bosses. I myself have been hired and fired so many times we could go on for days talking but here's about a, my bosses. A, um, a story. This, I thought this one was unbelievable. A horror story. Her boss, and we'll post this on our site as well. Her boss, her first day on the job, told her to take her dog and put her dog to sleep. <laughs> My boss wanted me to kill, kill the dog, my... is the name of the article. <laughs> That's horrible. She didn't do it, by the way. Of course she did it. But, but it was her first imagine... grown-up job, and oh, she was like blown God. away by it. Well, hard. my horror story was that my first day on the job um, in a radio station, uh, I think I've told the story before, but please bear with me if you've heard it. Uh, I know you have heard it. Um, I turn around, there's this little man following me around and following me around and following me around. I'm like, who are you? I mean, this is five, six o'clock in the morning because I was doing radio at the time. And he said, I'm your new boss. And he would said something profane to me, uh, directly to me. And I had to look back at him and say, I don't care who you are. You can say what he said to you. I can? Yes. He said, I was listening to you on my way into work this morning and I almost came in my pants. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. I think it was better than profane, don't you think? I think that says, and that is so, and, and, he, and, and he's he still tra- around, and isn't he's still he? around. Of course well, he I don't is. know if he's still around, I think but he is. was actually the reason that I met you, because that's the kind of man he was. Forget the fact that he was a lousy boss, because he, he was. Um, but he was a disgusting person. And everything was about sex, and when he, for example, in I interviewed interview, with him, and of course he said, you know, I'd like to hire you, but I have to tell you ahead of time that there will be after hours work. Of course, I was in my 20s, I'm like, hey, Rick, after hours, <laughs> I'll work hard and long, you know, and really hard and long was exactly what he wanted. Uh, so I did not. <laughs> oh, good God. Oh, you're good today. Oh, I'm hot. Um, but anyway, so obviously I did not take that job. But my first job, this is just a funny it's a, an anecdote. My first job, I worked in a drugstore. I was in high school. That was first job in high school. And my um, boss was the pharmacist, Harry. And unfortunately, Harry was almost like 95% deaf. And so he had these two huge hearing aids. And in those days, remember, they were like transistor radios, you know, hearing aids. So his head was, you know, often like this. So he really couldn't see you very well. And I worked there for one year. And I would walk in and I would say, good morning, Harry. And he would say, hello, Gene. <laughs> my entire year, I would say the man was deaf. He did not know my name was Janet. So I won't remember my mother but he wasn't in. abusive or No, like no, he was just funny. My mother, you know, you would say, how are you doing, Harry? He would say, three o'clock, because he thought you were asking him the time. My mother came in, and I said, Harry, this is my mother. And he said, you're Jean's mother? So nice to meet you. <laughs> he doesn't even know your name. You've been here for nine months. I said, well, that's Harry. Uh, but he was just a wacky, funny, crazy oh. boss. It was just a funny I, I like it. your story better yeah. than mine. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Harry and I did not have anything long and hard going. Believe me. <laughs> Woo! Yikes! Well, may I say the Quint is such a horrible boss? Horrible boss. Yeah. And it's not you, by the way. And by the way, we should also talk about the <laughs> fact you. that you were very mean to me. This is my employee being mean to me. Oh, let's get beyond that, Anne Marie. When she first went You were not. You are me. not. Listen, I did not find you to be an easy boss. I know, but you would sit there like this when I talked to you. You deserved it. <laughs> she deserved it. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. 27 years away. later, here we are. Oh, boy. The worst boss on the face of the Ooh. earth. Ooh. Talk about managing by fear. Do you think he was born in America? <laughs> <laughs> I want proof. I want proof. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's not good. I mean, any man who's you know catchphrases "you're fired" is not a pleasant boss. Can't be someone who's an enjoyable uh, I don't boss. even mind that you're fired. I fired people, but oh, I fire sure. them with it, with kindness. I mean, I basically yes. I fired them by saying you're in the wrong job. Yeah, it's not that you're a horrible person, but there's no fit, and that's what, how I let people go. But we've been you know working at it. I think you're a good boss. I think we play Yee. I think together, together we make a very good boss team. But interesting, we'll find out, won't we? Because we've uh, interviewed our staff. None of them want to go on the record. You'll find them to be anonymous. 
<laughs> as well they should be because they were fired. Let's hear. Let's hear what they have to say. Absolutely. Uh, Amory and Janet. Um. Hmm. Well, I really love the dogs, Ricky and Lucy. Working for Amory and Janet, well, nothing short of interesting. Especially since over the last few years, I've been the only guy in the office. Wait, you can't use that. <laughs> Some days, I just want to be like, what the f Well, what to say about Amory and Janet as bosses? Hmm. I'll just tell you one story. We went to the AARP conference in Boston, had all these great guests lined up for their radio show when they were on the radio, recorded the whole show and realized that none of it was on the air. Gee, wasn't that fun. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just, I'm just an intern, I don't, I don't really want to, I don't want to answer that. Very funny, everybody. Ha ha ha. You're all fired. Actually. You're all getting a raise. <laughs> and welcome to our lives. That's, that's, that's the yin and yang, the boss yin and yang. That's the how way, we work. That's how it works. works. That's how we roll. Guy. She's the good guy. Actually, we're going to put a lot more information on our website. Um, because there's a lot on this topic. It's actually very interesting. How to deal with mean girls in the office. Um how to, why women are afra more afraid of female bosses than male bosses, which I found to be very interesting. interesting. They are, um, they, because they say women bosses expect more of other women. I don't believe I do. I hope I don't. Um, I don't think I expect I, more I think of you expect a lot, a lot of everybody. Period, right. Yes. Men or women. Yes. So I don't think you differentiate no. by gender. No. I don't think so at all. And I really would welcome more men. But it's Although at the same time, as a boss, you have hired people from the produce section of the supermarket. Uh, you have hired, like, the person, you know the person what it is? who washed your dog has worked here before. My you here's my attitude about if hiring. If you're breathing, you can... No, 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 no. What is my attitude? Get them in here. Get them in here and see how it works. And if they make it through the first day, bring them back the second day. And if they are good at what they do and excited and yeah. passionate and have skills, I would they get hired. But I don't believe in hiring people just based on a resume. No, a of course paper. not. I like to. In, I like. I think the interview process is. Yeah, but even the interview. Who's going to come she in says and give you bad interview. references? Yeah. Resume, resume. Yeah. Who gets to put together a bad resume? Many people. And that, well, I've seen many bad resumes. Anyway. And then oh. when they ask for references, what are they going to give you? Somebody that you? I mean, it's probably their cousin. Or their sister. Mm -hmm. You don't know who they are. Oh, yeah. We've hired some people who we've discovered in the past <laughs> who gave us their parents' as references. And some people come in with stellar resumes, and they just can't hack it. Yeah. I think the interview process is extremely important. Can you speak? Can you answer key questions? Can you think? Are you quick on your feet? I find that to be important. I like to know, do you pick up the phone? Do you get it? Do you break out in a rash when you talk to me? You know, little Many have like that. hives. <laughs> that poor girl, I'll still remember. There was once a woman who worked here who left so quickly she left her shoes. <laughs> Honest to God. You blame that on me too, right? <laughs> That's the damn truth. All right. Anyway, we're going to leave you with this. Uh, we're going to post some things online, yeah. as Amory said, and then we're going to leave you with a little montage of uh, great and not so great bosses. We'll put uh, a smile on everybody's in face. Popular culture. Enjoy, everybody. Have Speak a great to you next week. week. And happy wedding. Happy wedding. <laughs> Look, miss, would you try answering the questions as I ask them? Yes, Mr. Van, I will, but it does seem that you've been asking a lot of very personal questions that don't have a thing to do with my qualifications for this job. You know what? You got spunk. Well, yeah. I hate spunk. <laughs> Did everybody miss me? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Bob. That didn't sound sincere seeing me after work. <laughs> Smithers, make me slap him. You call that a slap? Make me slap you. Now both. Now just you. Now give me a taste. <laughs>
What took you so long? Believe it or not, they only sell these critters in one pet shop in Jersey City. Well, hurry up. I don't have all night. Willie, you know that I believe in suffering for our beauty. But I don't think I can watch this. Get a grip, Mary. We did an article on this two months ago. If housewives in Singapore can handle it, so can I. They're just little fish nibbling off dead skin. I need 10 or 15 skirts from Calvin Klein. Okay, what kind of skirts do you... Please bore someone else with your questions. And make sure we have Pier 59 at 8 a.m. tomorrow. And remind Jocelyn I need to see a few of those satchels that Mark is doing in the pony. And then tell Simone I'll take Jackie if Maggie isn't available. Did Demarchelier confirm? Demarchelier. Demarchelier? Did he get, get him on the phone? Uh, okay. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired.